Hey guys, welcome, I'm Brandon. And in this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to create four directional top-down movement for your player. Ready? Let's go. So here is what we are going to create, a very nice animated four directional walk and idle character. And here's my starting scene. I brought in some assets from the asset store. They're free and I'll link them in the description. And it comes with this nice character. And if you use that package, everything is actually already nicely sliced up for us already. But just in case you need to know how to do it, I'll show you how it would be done. On our hero, we make sure we set the sprite mode to multiple, and these are 16 by 16 pixel characters, so we'll set that in our pixels per unit. And since this is pixel art, we wanna make sure we use point, or no filter down here. Otherwise our art is gonna look really blurry in game. In the sprite editor, we're gonna slice by cell size, put in 16 by 16, hit slice and hit apply. Okay, so for now, to bring him into our scene, I'm just gonna drag in this one for now and change his order and layer to something greater than zero. And I'm gonna rename him to player. And the first thing we wanna do is get him moving around. And for that, we need input. And for this, we need to go to the package manager and install the input system. I'm gonna create a new folder called input. And in there, let's create a new input actions, and I'm just gonna call it controls. We can double click it, and I'm gonna dock it over here. If you've never used this before, it's very easy to use, and it has a lot of built-in functionality that the old input system didn't have. And we're gonna start by making a new action map called player. And it already created a new action for us here. And this is where we'd put things like move, attack, interact, and things like that. So let's rename this to move. And for movement, I'm not looking for a button press, I'm looking for a constantly changing value. So let's change this action type to value. And for control type, we want this to return a vector two since we're doing a 2D game. And let's just get rid of this default binding here. So what we have is this really nice up, down, left, right composite here, which is exactly what we wanna use. I'm gonna add WASD in here. And I do seem to have a visual bug going on here, but there is a listen button that you can click right here and then just press the button on your keyboard or mouse or gamepad or whatever you're looking for. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the rest of the keys just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the arrow keys as well. And when you're done, don't forget to save your asset. Okay, now let's set up a very small and easy script called input manager. I'm also gonna create a game object called input manager in my hierarchy and drag that script onto it. And while we're here, to make it easy to access these control bindings that we just set up, let's add a player input component. This component is part of the input system package. Drag in our action here, and now let's open up our script. So I don't wanna to have to find this script or use get component every time I want to detect input. So we're going to set up a public static vector two called movement. Static means that this variable is not tied to this specific instance of this script. And so it's its own variable that we can just grab from this class by just calling input manager dot movement, which is really cool. Now, in order to set this, we need to read a value from this action binding that we set up. So we need to add our unity engine dot input system namespace here. And now we need to create an input action variable called move action. And to set this, we need to get a reference to that player input component that we added and use get component in awake to grab that reference. Now for move action, we can say player input dot actions square brackets and type in the string we called our action when we set up the bindings, so move. Now this is input, so we wanna check for it every frame. So we'll set movement in our update function to be move action dot read value of type vector two. And that's it, we are now detecting input and we are ready to get our player moving. So back in our project in a scripts and player folder, I'm going to create another script called player movement. and we can attach that to our player. My favorite way to move characters is with a rigid body 2D component. So let's add one of those, though we certainly do not want gravity, and we can zero at this angular drag as well. 
And to keep our movement buttery smooth, let's use interpolate here. With that done, let's open up our player movement script. So this is gonna be super easy. We'll want a move speed and a movement vector two, and we'll want a reference to our rigid body 2D. So we'll need to use get component on our rigid body. And now in update, we can say movement.set, and then set the X as our input manager.movement.x. And for the Y, it's the same thing, except input manager.movement.y. So now that we have our movement vector two, we can set the velocity on our rigid body directly and multiply it by our move speed. And because we're setting the velocity directly, you don't need to multiply this by time.delta time, and you don't need to do it in fixed update because we're literally just telling it what speed it's going to be at. That speed will be the same regardless of your frame rate. So let's test this. And there, you can see he's moving around really nicely. And bonus, with this new input system, the vector 2 is normalized for us by default. And what happens if that's not done is you get this weird speed boost when you move diagonally, but we don't have to worry about that thanks to the input system. So let's get our player animating. So first we're going to set up a new folder called Animations. And if you don't have your Animation window open, you can go to Window, Animation, and Animation. And we'll go ahead and set up the animations right after this. Have you ever tried to find decent indie game dev gear? I have, and there was not a whole lot of good options out there. For years, I actually resorted to having Nikki make it for me. So if you would like a way to support the channel and get some of that hard to find clothing that speaks to your game dev soul, check out our awesome new merch shop. From cozy hoodies to pixel perfect tees, our gear is designed for and by passionate developers like you. Support the dream, wear the passion, and join us on the indie journey. Okay, so we can select our player and click create. And I'm gonna make the walk left animation first, okay? Now you'll see that by doing that, we created two files. One called walk left, which is our actual animation file. And this one called player, which is our animator controller. You'll also notice on our player over here, it added an animator component and it assigned that animator controller to that component already, which is what we need to actually get him animating. Okay, so let's actually make our animations. If we expand our player sprite, I'm gonna find all the walking left sprites and it's these three. And I'm just gonna drag them right into the animation window. And already if we hit play, you can see it's already working, but it's way too fast. So let's set our samples to six, which is frames per second. And if that option is not showing for you, then select these three dots here and select show sample rate. Now that's looking a lot better, but to get it looping a bit nicer, I'd like to select this middle frame and control C to copy, and then I'm gonna paste it at the end here. Now it's looping perfectly. So let's set up our next three animations. You can select this over here and click create new clip, and we'll do a walk right, a walk up, and a walk down. Let's do walk right next. And you'll notice we don't actually have sprites with our character facing in that direction, but that's not a problem. You can drag in the same left facing sprites and change the sample rate to six. And you can copy the middle frame and paste it at the end again, except now at the beginning with our player selected, hit this record button here and then flip the X on the sprite renderer and then hit record again to stop recording. You can see this literally just flipped the sprite on the X, which is perfect. Now the up and down are pretty straightforward since we have all those sprites, so I'll just speed this part up. Awesome, so once that's done, let's open up our animator controller. And what we're gonna see is our walk left, which is orange, and the other three animations scattered around. Orange means it's the default animation. So if I play right now, it's gonna play the walk left on repeat. And walk left is default just because it's the first animation that we created. So before we do anything else, I want it to default to an idle animation, not a walk. So let's create one more animation on our player called idle down. And it's literally just one sprite. So we can just drag that in and we're done. Back in our animator controller, let's make sure that one is the default state. All right, so this is gonna be really easy. First, we can delete out all the walk animations because we're gonna handle those in a different way. 
we're gonna need to set up two float parameters. You'll see why soon, but let's call them horizontal and vertical. Now we're gonna create a new blend tree. You can right click anywhere on the grid, create from new blend tree, and let's rename this to movement. And double click it to go a layer deeper into that blend tree. So what we're gonna want is a 2D simple directional blend type. This is going to allow us to set animations based on an X and a Y value. You'll see it wants two parameters, so make sure that one is horizontal and one is vertical. And then we want to add all four of our animations. So add motion field, and let's do that four times. And let's actually plug those in. So up, down, left, and right. So up is gonna be just like our movement vector two in our code. It's gonna be a one on the Y and a zero on the X. Down is gonna be minus one on the Y and zero on the X. Left will be minus one on the X and zero on the Y. And right will be one on the X and zero on the Y. And you can see by playing with these sliders, our character will turn the way we want based on our horizontal and vertical slider values. So click on the base layer here to go back a level out of this blend tree, because now we wanna set up our transition logic. So to go from movement to idle, that's easy. Now, unfortunately, there's no equals with the conditions. I believe that has to do with floating point math behind the scenes. So what we'll do is we'll say we'll go from movement to idle if our horizontal and vertical is greater than negative 0.01 and our horizontal and vertical is less than 0.01. Same way of saying they equal zero. And make sure that we deselect has exit time and zero out this transition time. Now to go from idle to movement, let's start with vertical is less than zero. And next we need an or, and to use an or, we actually create another transition from idle to movement. This one's gonna be if vertical is greater than zero or our horizontal is less than zero or our horizontal is greater than zero. And for all of those, you wanna make sure that we uncheck has exit time and get rid of transition duration. So now it's just a matter of adjusting these parameters with our code. So in our player movement script, it's good practice to set up strings as constant strings so that they can't be changed during runtime. So let's type them exactly as they were in the animator. And now we need to make a variable for our animator and get that component in awake. And now this is as simple as saying animator.setFloat and we pass in our string and the movement on the X. And for vertical, same thing and pass in the movement on the Y. Let's test. And I'm getting some pretty weird behavior here when I move up. And it looks like that's because I forgot to set this to vertical here. So, okay, great, we got it working now, so it starts off in idle, and if we move in any direction, he looks in the proper direction. But the one thing that I don't like is that if we leave this, he always defaults back to looking down, which really doesn't feel right, so let's fix that. And real quick, if you're finding this video helpful, then I just wanna say thank you for dropping a like or a comment. Now what we want is to make our player idle in the last direction that he was looking in, and so for this, we need to first set up the other three directions for the idle animation. So we'll create three new animation clips and drag in the appropriate sprite for each. And don't forget to flip the X on the sprite renderer when he's facing right. And by the way, you can select these idles when you're done and deselect loop time because they're one frame and they don't need to be looping. Now for these, we're also going to use a blend tree, but we don't need to delete what we already have, except for these animations here. But instead, we're gonna right click this idle down animation and turn it into a blend tree by selecting create new blend tree in state. And now let's rename this to just idle. Now we're gonna need to set up two more floats, last horizontal and last vertical. Now let's double click this to open it up. And this is gonna be set up exactly the same way as our other blend tree, but with the two new floats that we just created. So you can hook all of them up like so.
Now all that's left is to set those values with our code. So back in our player movement script, let's add those two new parameters as constant strings. And all we'll say is if our movement does not equal a vector 2.0, meaning as long as we are moving in some direction, then we will set our last horizontal and last vertical. If we're not moving, then these won't change and they'll keep the last direction that we were moving in. So let's play and test. And now you can see he's moving around nicely and when we stop moving, his idle remains fixed in the proper direction. We also set up our input in a really smart way, so it would be really easy to add something like gamepad support by adding a new action and assigning the left stick directions or the D-pad buttons in there. And you could save your asset and it'll automatically just work. You can even add built-in functionality for stick dead zones so the movement has to cross a certain threshold in order for it to register. If you want access to the source files of any tutorial ever made on this channel, then check out our Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching.